one more time. Let's do one more time. Let's do one more time. Let's do one more time. Hi everyone, this is Chicho, and I'd like to welcome you to Series 3B of the Language of Mathematics. Now, this series is a continuation of what we did last year in Series 3A. And um, since this is a continuation, of that, I'd like to do a little recap of what we did last year, which was uh, basically we started off, it was supposed to be a series about the equal sign and units, and we started off fine. I started talking about the equal sign and, you know, the different symbols that have branched off the equal sign and what the equal sign means. And um, basically, it's just, you know, equivalence, right? Trying to compare one thing to another thing, seeing if this this side of the scale equals this side of the scale right and again there's other symbols that branch off from there right some of them you know they're inequality symbols saying that one side of the equation is larger than the other side of the equation or you know one side is smaller than the other side of the equation there's a uh, congruency when you come to uh, geometry trigonometry you can have the element of when you go into number theory uh, set theory basically where you know you can say these numbers belong to this set uh, and we talked about some of the stuff in the in series uh, series one as well with the real number set right when you say you know one two whole numbers going up or whole numbers um, zero one two three all the way up to infinity, they would belong to a whole number set, right? They're the element of the whole number set. So I sort of touched on the equal sign at the beginning when I made a couple of videos uh, about, uh, you know, comparing two things, and I took it to the extremes uh, to try to make a point. Uh, I, I went to the smallest thing that we've been able to measure in the real world, and uh, the largest thing, some would say the largest thing that we've been able to measure in the real world, and um, that's black holes and elementary particles. And um, I put a couple of videos together just, uh, you know, at the beginning, try to emphasize the point that when you go down, when you, you know, break it down, if you when you're talking about two things, you can always compare two things. Initially, um, a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of teachers say when they're um, initially trying to introduce units to people, and I've done this myself too, is they always say, you know, you can't add apples and oranges, right? If you go apple plus an apple is, uh, you know, two apples plus two apples is four apples, right? And your units there would be apples. And, you know, they say, trying to make sure that uh, students don't add the wrong units together, they say, you know, you can't add apples and oranges together, right? And I've done this myself, I've been guilty of it myself. However, that's not really true. You can add apples and oranges together as long as you break them down to a specific unit, right? So two apples plus two apples is four apples. Two apples plus two oranges is four pieces of fruit. So what you're doing there is finding a common unit between two things that you're comparing. And that's where the importance of units comes in. That's where the importance of how it relates to the equal sign comes in. So there was a little, of a, a little bit of talk about that at the beginning of Series 3A. So we sort of messed around with that a little bit and, you know, brought it down to uh, the point that if you're talking about something, it's really important to know what property of that thing it is that you're talking about, which is units. Now from there I was going to, you know, expand on units and talk more about the equal sign units, but what I did is sort of take a tangent, I went off on a tangent, and uh, and that occurred when we started talking about the equal sign and how to move around the equal sign, right? How, you know, how you can take numbers and move them over or solve for equations or solve for variables. Yeah, and we, you know, we dealt with addition and subtraction, how you move around when you have addition and subtraction. Talked about how you move around with the multiplication, division, exponents, and radicals, which is basically, you know, if you're trying to get rid of something on one side of the equation, you do the opposite to it. And if you do something on one side of the equation, you got to do it to the other side of the equation. That's what the equal sign is, right? It's a scale, it's a balance. If you're trying to keep things balanced, if you put something here, you got to put something here. If you remove something here, you got to remove something here, right? And that's how you move around the equal sign. We also talked about, uh, you know, one one tool I like to use, and I, I teach this to a lot of my students, is uh, cross multiplication. I know uh, most my, most people I've encountered hate fractions, so what I, what I like to do is get rid of fractions, initially anyway, with simple equations, get rid of fractions right away, and if you have one fraction equal to another fraction, all you do is take the denominator here, the denominator here, and cross multiply up, right, across the equal sign, and that gets rid of your fractions. And we talked about that a little bit, and, uh, you know, sort of solve equations, and we solve some simple equations. From there, uh, we kicked it into quadratic functions, quadratic equations, which are basically anything in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. And these are just polynomials. Poly quadratic equations are polynomials of degree 2. And to solve quadratic equations, what we talked about was uh, the different factoring techniques that we have to solve quadratic equations, which are basically four manual, one using a formula. And four manual are... Um, the greatest common factor, GCF, simple trinomial factoring, uh, the difference of squares, and complex trinomial factoring. And the fifth one that we use a formula for when we can't easily, you know, factor things out, which is a quadratic formula. Now, out of those five, we've already talked about uh, GCF, and GCF you use anywhere for any type of polynomial equation or non-polynomial equations. It's basically the greatest common factor. Anything similar between them, you can take them out and put them in the front, right? So we talked about GCF, we talked about the simple trinomial factoring, and what we still have to talk about is uh, the difference of squares, complex trinomial factoring, and the quadratic formula. We're also going to talk about uh, another form of factoring that we use to factor larger degree polynomials, larger than quadratic function, lar larger than degree 2, which is synthetic division. And that is used for anything 
larger than degree two. And we're going to talk about that, right? So what we ended up doing was, you know, talk about quadratic equations specifically and some other, uh, some higher degree functions as well, where, you know, we talk about what it, is, what it means when we're factoring a quadratic equation or when we're factoring a polynomial equation, which is basically factors of anything, factors of a polynomial equation or a quadratic equation are the x-intercepts. And there's multiple terms that mean the same thing when we're talking about factors, right? When we factor a quadratic equation, what we're getting, the solutions, are basically the x-intercepts where the function crosses the x-axis. And you also refer to that as, you know, the zeros, the solutions, the roots, the factors, and, uh, you know, the x-intercepts. So whenever you're factoring for something, when you get x equals something, you know, multiple things, or, you know, x only equals, you know, one number, what you're really getting is solving for, what, what the solution gives you is where the function crosses the x-axis. And we talked a lot about this. Uh, basically, we're exploiting the property where if you have multiple things multiplied together to give you zero, the way you solve for any type of equation like that is take each, you know, what you do is exploit the property of zero where the only way you can have multiple things multiplied together to give you zero is if at least one of them is equal to zero. And since you don't know which one is equal to zero, you solve for all of them equaling zero, right? And sometimes all of them give you solutions, sometimes none of them give you solutions. Sometimes you get, you know, some give you solutions, some don't give you solutions, right? And we talked a lot about this stuff. One of the things we did that when we were solving equations, uh, we talked about, you know, some of the things that you cannot do when you solve an equation, which is uh, eliminating solutions, dividing by zero, uh, and dividing by zero basically gives you asymptotes in polynomial equations, and uh, checking solutions, right? So and checking solutions is quite important. I, you know, initially when I start teaching, uh, teaching these techniques to my students, I get them to check their solutions because I don't want you know people to take for granted that the answer they get at the end really solves the equation. It's a valid solution. Sometimes it's a, you know you, you might have done everything correctly, but once you substitute it back into the polynomial equation, the solution doesn't make sense. So you have to eliminate the solution, right? So uh, checking solutions, checking answers is important. And uh, you know we, we did a fair bit of different types of equations. Some polynomial, some not polynomial. We did a fair bit of polynomial, but some of them were not polynomial equations. And uh, we'll touch a little bit further on those uh, non-polynomials. As well. So from you know factoring and graphing quadratic equations, you know we got our hands really dirty with this stuff, right? And from there, at the end of series 3B, uh, 3A, what we ended up doing, what I did was take a step back and went, you know, in depth into the terminology of what a polynomial equation is. And, we, you know, I put up three videos uh, towards the end uh, talking about polynomial equations, talking about, you know, what they can give you, uh, you know, what the x-intercepts means. And we sort of did a summary and defined a lot of terms and explained what it is that we're talking about when we say polynomial equations, right? And that's where we left off series 3A. In this series, in series 3B, we're going to wrap up the factoring techniques, uh, talk about the remaining four, four techniques, right, which are what's left is uh, difference of squares, complex trinomial factoring, quadratic formula, and synthetic division. So we're going to start solving more quadratic functions and more polynomial functions. And we're going to talk a lot more about polynomial functions in general and start graphing polynomial functions and, you know, maybe see where we can apply them and some of the, some of the, some of the polynomial functions or quadratic functions that we have in the real world, right? So that's where we are, that's where we left off Series 3A. This is where we're going with Series 3B. I'm also going to do, uh, you know, put in as additional stuff in there as well, uh, wherever I think, um, you know, something is needed. If we need to start discussing something else specifically related to polynomial equations, we will start talking about it, okay? So this was sort of just a quick little recap, just give you a, you know, rapid uh, explanation of what we did last year. And I forget how many, you know, how many videos there are. Uh, it's two to three hours worth of material on there, four hours maybe, worth of material on there that we're sort of recapping. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if you're not familiar with that series, you should take a look at it, because what I'm going to do is probably just jump, um, you know, continue that right away. So I'm not going to do too much recap and the video's coming up. I will do a little bit just to... Um, you know, just to just to remind everyone what it is, what's going on, and what we're talking about, so you know, people aren't lost uh, because there has been, you know, a few months gap, a year basically uh, since we, I did the last video, um, and uh, that's about it. That's what that's what we're going to do for series three B. Um, and uh, one thing that has changed uh, for this year is. Uh, uh, for the previous three years, what I done, what I did was, uh, you know, I had the summers off, so what I would do is do as many videos as I could for the summer before my work kicked in in the fall. And uh, in the fall, I would take a break. Um, one reason I did that is because I had work coming up in the fall. And the other reason was that the weather was nice, so I, would, I could go outside and do my videos, uh, you know, on walls outside, right? Uh, that's changed. My schedule has changed because math, these videos, uh, this is the project I'm going to be focused on for the foreseeable future. So I'm going to continue Series 3B until I'm satisfied that we can you know, end it and then start the next series. And the next series, I'm not sure if it's going to start right away after the series is done or not. I might take a little break and do a little bit of back-end work uh, to hopefully get the websites up. I'm still going to do that uh, on the side. That's one of the things I'm going to do while I uh, make these videos. But um, So this thing is not going to end, you know, in a couple of months or, or whatnot. I'm going to continue this and probably shoot into the winter. Uh, so um, it's going to be, I'm going to go into the cold. So you're going to see uh, uh, smoke coming out of my mouth. And I'm going to be dressing a lot warmer. And uh, one thing I'm going to do... Uh, you know, as soon as the weather starts getting a little colder, is I do miss my beard, so uh, I'm going back uh, bearded style. So hopefully for this series, you're gonna see a uh, beard slowly growing on me. Okay. Um. um anyway, uh, that's it. I hope that's uh, you know that 
reminds people if you followed it from Series 3B, I hope that reminds you of what we did. And uh, I hope you're looking forward to this year, uh, because I am. Uh, I'm seriously looking forward to it. And uh, I got a few lessons already organized uh, to shoot. And, uh, and we'll take it from there. We'll see where we go. And uh, welcome back. Uh, glad to be back again. And um, I guess I'll see you guys in the next videos.